student shoppers ask for sun-kissed oranges, the pick of California's bumper crops, because they have the richest juice and finest flavor. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Sun-Kissed presents Luella Parsons, world's most widely read motion picture writer, who will introduce your guest of the evening, Miss Parsons. Good evening. I wish you could all see how Norman Sierra looks, as he sits here, ready to talk to you. He looks just like a fashion player. But you know, I'm no society editor. But I'm going to try to describe to you what she's wearing. She came down here right from the set with her makeup on. And she's wearing one of the costumes she's wearing in her picture. It's tangerine with hat and coat to match, trimmed with ermine. Now, that's pretty good, isn't it, Norma? <laughs> I want to introduce to you Norma Shear, one of our finest dramatic actresses on the screen and a real beauty. <laughs> Thank you, Laura, dear. And I'm coming right back at you by saying I remember a time when you wouldn't have handed me those bouquets. No, Ma, I don't know what you mean. Remember a few years ago, back in New York, when you, the famous Luella Parsons, managed to spare a few minutes for lunch at the Algonquin Hotel with an obscure would-be movie actress who happened to be me? <laughs> no, Ma, I shall never forget that day, but the determined youngness of you. And yes, I have to say it. The proud independent. <laughs> oh, that was determination. I was just determined to impress you. And I was having an awful hard time doing it, too. Because there were so many famous people in the dining room that you knew. Every time I begin telling you what a great actress I was going to be, you keep bowing to this one and waving to that. I hope I wasn't rude. Rude? Why, no, darling. You were just very bored. And who could blame you? You must have heard the same story too often. But your story came too, now, didn't it, Norma? Well, this is a Cinderella business, isn't it, Luella? Why? Were you the poor ways then? Those were the days when jobs were few and far between, can you? I believe the radio fan who were listening in would be interested about your arriving in California. Was it as you expected it would be? Come on, tell us, Norma. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must confess I was a little disappointed in my reception. You know, I thought upon such occasions they'd have the red carpets, the brass band, the array of expecting photographers and reporters. I was an executive or two thrown in. Can you imagine my embarrassment, Luella, when my mother and I stepped off the train to find that, well, apparently no one even knew or cared whether we were arriving or whether we weren't? Oh, <laughs> poor Norma. But California's been very kind to you since, now, hasn't it? Well, I should say it has. It's been wonderful to me. You know, I've been at the same company ever since I came out here. Well, they've been slick to me. They've been wonderful. I've been terribly happy. Well, I have to say for them, of course, you... I don't want to give them all the credit because you've been pretty good yourself. They've given you some wonderful stories, especially since the talkies came in. I think they use rare good judgment in getting away from the Snow White heroine. People were fed to the teeth with Gaga girls who were 100% pure. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think, um, quite like I had in Divorce Day and Strangers May Kiss, you know, they're lots of fun to play. And I don't think the audience is mind a few missteps, you know, to reform in the end. <laughs> well, I'm very glad you recall. <laughs> you certainly did give the world an illustrated idea of how to interest a wandering husband in divorce. Now, Luella, I thought you weren't going to mention husbands in this interview. <laughs> or babies. Oh, uh, hey, hey. <laughs> That's all right. I'm sorry. You're forgiven.